right. Yes. This is week nine of our summer long summer of bottoming, where we are spending all summer doing deep dives into films that are on IMDb's bottom 100 list of the 100 worst films of all time. It has been a whole summer of hideous fucking shit. I thought that it would be fun, but no, it has been a, a torturous. It has been difficult. It has been an uphill battle, and oh my god. How, uh, how would you say it compares what, to our summer of Star Wars? I would say this is worse. Yes. Because at least uh, we had Han Solo for a good portion of those films. Han Solo and Samuel L. Jackson. I didn't see True. Waddle in Swept Away. Yeah. So, uh, but, but it's close. Because it? it's like a lot of the Star Wars movies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Battlefield Earth was at least fun <laughs> last week. We were able to being an alien, tiny <laughs> whiplash. But what I want to do here in one of is spend a little bit of time discussing one of the films on the list that we will not be doing because we can't do all 100. And so this week we will be discussing a Turkish film that's in the top 10 that is surprisingly not a Recep Evadik movie. Because there's two Turkish films on here. Probably more, but those are the two. Hey, Recep we, we about Recep. got a lot of fucking listens. Oh, yeah. It, well, it, it, it's not often that you see uh, two Americans talking about an, an in this country obscure Turkish film. You know? Yes. So if you're Turkish, seeing two... Uh, uh, sinful leftists in America talking about Recep Evadik. I imagine that's that's a pretty big draw, you know. Yeah. Anywho, uh, the film in question is the 2015 Turkish propaganda film called Codename K O Z, which is in the IMDb bottom 100 list. This film is number four. Really. That's a big ass deal. The number four worst film of all time. The fucking coffee machine always has to beep while I'm recording anything. So in order to explain what this week's what this movie is, codename KOZ, we need to get a bit deep into Turkish politics here to fully understand what this movie is. So just buckle up. Okay, so there's a conservative party in Turkey. And they're called the AKP, or the AK Party. And they've been in power pretty much since 2003. They're a far-right, ultra-conservative group that want to go back to the old days where men were men and women could be smacked. And so in 2013, there was a huge, uh, big-time corruption scandal where... 91 people connected with the AK party were arrested on charges relating to bribery, fraud, corruption, money laundering, and gold smuggling. Who are you? Cylons? Yes. That's a Battlefield Earth joke. I can say that now because we did Battlefield Earth. And so uh, in response to 91 members of the AK party being arrested, the AK party decreed that all police officers who were not 100% loyal to the political party would be fired. And so they purged the police force of hundreds and hundreds of police officers who weren't 100% on board with the AK party. Uh... Yeah, so the political party in power fired hundreds of police officers for the crime of arresting corrupt government officials. So, so the prime minister's excuse for, 
for this scandal should sound fucking familiar, okay? Okay. And be, to be clear, this is 2013. 2013. So Prime Minister, Prime Minister Eridon said, basically, so a lot of you have a lot of questions about the corruption scandal, so let me explain. There is no corruption scandal. There never was. And these arrests are not arrests because we did something bad, but these arrests are actually a sinister plot by a secret cabal of leftists who are against the Eridan government. And they have been here since the last party was in power. But instead of quitting when the, when the AK party came in, they embedded themselves deeply, secretly, within the government. And they have been trying to take down uh, us from within. I guess you could call it a deep state, if you will. Yes. And these deep state leftists have been taking us down from within. And so the movie, Codename KOZ, is a government-made propaganda film about the corruption scandal from the point of view of the corrupt Eridan government. And it's a real all signs point to yes thing that Donald Trump saw the success of this ridiculous spin in Turkey and rode it all the way to the motherfucking White House. Yes. So, so Donald Trump is such a fucking uh, con artist that he didn't even come up with the deep state. No. He fucking stole that from Turkey. Like, what the fuck? In Turkey, they didn't call it a deep state. They called it the parallel state. The and codename KOZ. Oh, that was... What'd you say? You're What'd breaking you say? up an awful lot. Uh, yeah, it sucks. I'm trying my best here. Okay. Uh, That's all we can ever ask. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, so, anywho, the movie came out in 2015. It's got horrible editing and robotic acting and a laughably bad script. It's a real piece of shit movie. This is why governments don't make fucking films, okay? But almost... Every Turkish cinema throughout the entire nation showed it because although no government official said it, it was generally understood that for every movie theater, showing codename KOZ was mandatory. Yeah. But so many people refused to go see the film, it, so much so that after a few days, most cinemas just showed it for free. And still nobody came to see the film. But it is very much likely that Donald Trump stole the idea of the deep state from Turkey. So don't be surprised if two or three years from now, Donald Trump premieres his new film. Kevin Sorbo, John Voight, and Chachi star in Codename Deep State. Yes. An all-new film written and directed by Donald Trump. So don't be surprised if that happens, is what I'm saying. Because he didn't even he didn't even come up with the idea of the deep state. He stole that. How fucking crazy is that? Well, they, Isn't that they're, insane? They're buddies, you know. They pal yeah. around. You know, Donald Trump likes the dictators. We know this. And, you know, he, he had yeah. absolutely nothing to say when Ar Erdogan came over to this over to this country and his, his guards beat up a bunch of American citizen Turkish protesters. That was Yes, cool. I remember that. Oh, my God, I remember that. Uh, so, also, uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, hi, how are you doing? And also, uh, for... Two hours and four minutes. You still have time to vote on what movie we do next on the podcast. Yes. We have three movies. 
Let's get a look at that. Okay, we've got three movies on the docket. Son of the Mask, The Hottie and the Naughty, that's a Paris Hilton film, oh, and Pandemic Shock and Terror. Of course, I'm a, I'm a little bit biased, but I voted for <coughs> Pandemic Shock and Terror. I, I love that film so much, and I just want to spend the entire episode singing, hanging out with my family. But well, let Consult I, I voted for Son of the Mask last week, so I, I don't think I could really do it again. Yeah. And everything in my soul will not allow me to vote for a movie that has Paris Hilton in it. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's Repo. Yeah. So I gotta go Birdemic. Unless I gotta go Birdemic yeah. on this one. Here I go. Yeah. I'm Cast in my bird demic vote. Oh my god, it's up to fifty percent. Nice. So uh, I think I know what we're watching. <laughs> I was rooting for the son of the mask only because I wanted to talk at length about Jamie Kennedy and how he was tricked into appearing in a far right anti abortion propaganda film. But uh I will abide by whatever the fan base chooses. But I will say this. It's August now, and we're really, we're getting to, we're near the end game here. Because Son of the Mask is number 10 on the list. The Hottie and the Naughty is number 7. And Burdenic is number 6. So we're really getting close to the end. Yes. Dangerously close to the end of, of, of this. And after this, just FYI, after this, we're going to take it easy breezy for a while because we deserve it. Oh, you fuck know? yeah. We've had such a rough time that we're just going to have some fun. Maybe we'll watch fucking Jungle Cruise. That was kind of fun. Maybe we'll discuss Summer of Soul. That was fucking wonderful. Summer of Soul was awesome. Uh, there's a documentary about Val Kilmer that I really want to watch. Apparently. Is that out yet? It's it's a yeah it it's it, it's available on Amazon Prime, but yeah Val Kilmer uh, always had a uh, a camcorder with him at all times, and he filmed behind the scenes of basically everything he ever did. Yeah, and so they've combined that into a what's supposed to be a really amazing documentary. Uh, but you know what, the first movie we do. When we're done with the summer of bottoming, we're gonna do the Suicide Squad. Okay. It has been a difficult. It has been a difficult weekend for me because I have a super high definition copy, a movie theater quality of this film on my computer and on my PlayStation Four, ready to watch. But I haven't watched it because I have tickets to go see it tomorrow. Yes. It's been difficult. Me not to watch this James Gunn film. You have no idea how difficult it has been. But yeah, we're definitely doing that once we're done with this summer. This summer has absolutely sucked, so I'll be happy to, to do something else. So that's it for our Act 1 deep dive into one of the uh, IMDb bottom 100 films that we will not be doing. I really wanted to do Codename KOZ, but for the life of me, I can't find a sub or a dub anywhere. So, and I'm done with watching Turkish movies without subtitles. Uh, Turkish Spider Man, Turkish Star Wars, Turkish fucking Superman. I'm done. Yeah. So. Unless I can find Recep Eva Deke with dubs or subs, there, there's no chance. There's just no chance. So, uh, yeah, join us next week. Next week, we have something special. We will not be discussing one of the movies from the... <coughs> we will be discussing next week one of the movies from the list that we will not be doing. Yeah. <sighs> Next week, we will be discussing all of the films from the IMDb Bottom 100 that we've already done on the podcast. Okay. One, a two, recap. three, four, five, eight. There are nine. No, no, not a recap. Movies that we have done on the podcast before this summer. Oh, okay. 
There are nine movies on the IMDb bottom 100 that we've already done. So that's why I kind of wanted to do Cats again, but we didn't do Cats because we already did two episodes on Cats. We did, yes, we did uh, two episodes. Episodes yes. on Cats, and it was worth it because it's amazing. Skimble, where is Skimble? So, so join us next week. We're going to do a fun uh, look back at some of the bad movies we've already done. So join us next week and cut on that segment.